Welcome to Hack the File, I'm Michael Lopez, and on today's episode, we're going to be um, doing a Trojan. Enjoy. Alright, we're back. So, I took a um, holiday break. <sighs> I've been really busy, I've been fixing stuff at my house, so... Took a quick break, but um, we're back. We're into the good stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, continue. So, I think we let on the last video we left off on you know hiding the uh, an implant in a legitimate file. <laughs> so um, let's go ahead and just pick up from there. Attackers often use social engineering techniques to get implants onto a victim's machine. For example, they might send a victim a phishing email that encourages them to download a Trojan, a program that carefully hides a malicious implant inside another program. The term Trojan comes from the Trojan Wars. Oh, wait a minute. Where did do this one? Didn't we? Oh no. The term children comes from the Trojan Wars, during which legend has it the Greeks gained access to the city of Troy by adding a large statue uh, of a horse called the Trojan Horse. Man! I'm tired. Um, we'll execute a similar attack here by sending a phishing email encouraging a victim to download an updated version of the company's email client. Alpine from a fake site. Uh, yeah, client Alpine from a fake site. You'll execute this attack on the Ubuntu desktop machine in your virtual environment. Let's begin by creating the cho Trojan. Creating a cho Trojan. Create a folder called Trojans inside of your malicious folder and navigate to it. This is where you'll place the Trojan and you'll create. Alright, make directory desktop malware Trojans. So they're doing this on the desktop malware. Let's see if I have that set up. I usually, I don't know what I do. So, my temp, I'm sure I have it in the heck the file. Malware Trojans. Alright, let's see if I have malware in here. Well, I guess I'll just have to start a new one. So, let's just do, what we're going to do is, we're going to do it first on the desktop, just like it says. And then we'll transfer it over to this. So, you want to make directory... I guess I have done it already. Oh, I must have deleted it. Really? 
Okay. So now we have a desktop, malware, Trojans. Alright, let's see what else we need. Now it wants us to go to there. We'll create our children by modifying the Alpine installer. Don't know what that is. The .deb file, so that Alpine installer, the .deb file, so, so that it installs the implant as well as Alpine download. The legitimate Alpine installer by running the following command. Desktop malware Trojans app get download Alpine. Okay, so let's do that. So let's go to let's go to um, now there's an easier way to do this like I said we can go here but I need to practice moving around in the command line right so That's a uh, CD. All right, now we're in um, Trojans. <laughs> now let's see what it wanted me to do uh, app get download Alpine all right let's do that Say download our point. Am I having the connection issue again? Gosh, let me check. Looks like it. Looks like I'm having a connection issue again. So we'll restart this puppy. Alright, I reset everything and let's see if we can do this again. Let's see if I can download this now. My internet is working. Hopefully this isn't grossly outdated. It looks like it did it. Oh crap, I didn't do it in the right directory. Can't, can't freaking spell.
All right, there you go. Now it's in the right directory and I downloaded it. Okay. Let's move on. After, after you've downloaded the client, extract the contents of the file to the mail Trojan folder by running the following command. Mail Trojan folder. After you've downloaded the client, extract the contents of the file to the mail Trojan folder. In Grandpa, I'll find Deb file E Mel Trojan. Did I skip something? Let's see. So we've got an Alpine dot dev file. Okay. After you've downloaded the client, extract the contents of the file to the mail Trojan folder. Running the following command in Grandpa in Grandpa. <laughs> oh, man. Let me copy this. Segmentation fault in Grandpa. I'll point it to you know, Trojan B Mel Trojan. Let's see if that worked. Oh. I have no clue what that is doing. E N G R A M P A Alpine dot de Alpine two dot dev E Mel Trojan um, 
segmentation fault. Let's see where this is put. I don't know why that is. user all right yeah just use a different command that in grandpa I don't know why that doesn't work or if it's obsolete as you can see I just googled how to extract a dot dev file and I just followed this it's the same thing destination so dpkg minus x file name it extracts it so I just followed that I mean that's all I did that's what you gotta do when you're troubleshooting stuff when stuff doesn't work just google it and uh, you know you can troubleshoot it I didn't know the command to extract it right off the back, right off the bat of my brain. So there it is. We got that extracted. Now let's let's see what's next. You're gonna run into all kinds of little problems here and there. Okay, open the mail Trojan folder. Actually, what I want to do before we go any further is, uh, do I want to? Nah, I'm good. We'll just um, keep going. All right, the files in the Trojan Mail Trojan folder contain the extracted dot files. So. It says Debian. I didn't, I didn't get that one. Maybe that's why that in Grandpa is supposed to have that Debian folder. Hmm.
because it's not showing that figure two it's not showing this Debian folder in there it's only showing the user let's see if we need that editing your .deb file you'll need to edit the alpine installers .deb installation file so that it includes your malicious implant so let's walk through the installer structure. All installation files must contain a Debian folder, which contains the files that describe the program and how to install it. The installation file can also contain other folders such as var for files or user for binaries. These folders are copied to a location relative to the home directory during installation. For example, the installer would copy the user folder to the home user. The installer then will read the contents of the Debian folder. Click Debian folder, you should see the file shown below. So this is the next day. I was super tired um, I didn't want to throw away the video so because I did some troubleshooting on it that I think is important to the process and um, so one second what the heck is this um, I mean, give me one second. So yeah, I didn't want to throw away the video. So um, I decided to uh, just come back the next day when I'm rested. I um, so what I did was I left everything the same except. I changed the directory so if you're following along you're gonna get kind of confused on where we at in the directory um, I deleted the desktop and I just went into my hack the file and I went to um, the when I created a new folder called Trojans now we we were doing the we using the attack server but I left that alone so I restarted previous chapters went to Trojans attack server and I put it all in here malware Trojans and then this is where we're at the, we're at the mill Trojans so I extracted um, I use this command um, not that one this command to extract the dot dev file instead of instead of what they they wanted us to do so they wanted us to use the ngramp Uh, and grandpa but um, I was getting a C programming failure in that um, so I decided to use a different I mean I mean that was in the last video that I did yesterday so um, but what you do is you just google it and you'll be alright now I was worried about this Debian folder, right? Um, we're going to try to do it without having this actual Debian folder because I found the user folder and the control folder that has all this stuff and it doesn't have this post int, but it says to create it if you don't have it, right? It's just a document. So we're going to create that, right? So this is where we're at. Um, we've we've done that. Well, we didn't do this. But we did something else. We figured out how to get that extract that dot dev file extracted. Now we're picking up right here. Okay. 
So you'll need to edit the Alpine installers .deb installation file so that it includes your malicious implant. So let's walk through the installers structure. And the malicious implant we did in the last video. And I think I have that still. All installation files must contain a Debian folder, which contains the files that describe the program and how to install it. Now it says that, but I don't have it. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go through this and we're gonna try to do the steps and everything without it, because I'm assuming that I I don't know, you know, it might be outdated, might something might be wrong, but I follow the instructions to the T. You know and I try to update this and upgrade it didn't work so um, redid this a couple times I mean didn't get it right and this and grandpa I mean does it you know extract it's just a uh, uh, like a like a Z zip right or whatever it's an extractor so I don't know I don't know much about it but well we're gonna go we're gonna push forward which contains the files that describe the program and how to install it the installation file can also contain other folders such as var for for files or user for binaries these folders are copied to a location relative to the home directory during installation. For example, the installer would copy the user folder to the home user. The installer then will read the contents of the Debian folder. Click Debian folder, you should see the file shown. As you can see, this folder contains three files control, MDS5, M M control, MD5sum, and post int. <laughs> Let's look at each of these and alter them as required. The following is a snippet from the Alpine control file. So one, two, three, you know, this is what it's going to look like. This is the control file. The control file is required for all Debian packages that must contain information on the program. For example, the file contains the name of the package, the hardware architecture that it supports. So the name of the package is package Alpine architecture AMD64. The name of the maintainer, maintainer is Ashish LaRoya.org and its dependencies, dependents, depends, mlock, there's dependencies. The MD5 sum file contains the MD5 hashes of the files, including included in the installation. These hashes aren't checked during installation. Instead, they're used to verify the integrity of the files after installation. If you can want, if you want, you can add an MD5 hash of your malicious implant. You don't have to, but it's an extra stealthy step. <laughs> the following is a snippet from the MD5 file. So here's a snippet of that. So let's um let's look at those and and you know look at those and see. Um, so I extracted these. So here's your control. No, let's go, let's do that. Well, let's do the control first. So Alpine version AMD Laura. I mean this looks like you know. This looks like the file, right? MD5. And here goes your MD5 hashes. So we've got everything here, right? Except for the, but the, I mean the, what do you call it? File. But we can create that, right? We just create a file, and put put those in it. I mean, if we have to, right? That's part of troubleshooting that I'm, that we're gonna, because we're creating this, right? So that's part of the troubleshooting that we're gonna look at later i mean if we have to create that file this um Damien file i mean we have to if we do right which i don't know if we are we're gonna have to create this file fo i mean folder let's say folders Damien folder so we're gonna have to create this posted file 
So the post in file is run after the installation is completed. Daemon packages normally contain pre int and post int files that the original package developer placed to instruct the Daemon package manager what to do before and after installation. We'll add the code that will activate your implant to the post int file. The post int file is a great candidate because it will run after the application has been installed. Thus, the implantation process won't interfere with the installation. If the file doesn't exist, create it by using the file manager or by running the following command. So we can touch this, create the post it, right? But we're just going to create the file the easy way because I don't want to get confused too much. Open the post and file and copy the following code in the snippet. So what we're going to do is, we're gonna, you know, you can pause it, follow along, you know, run this if you want. But I'm going to move this over so I can copy this. Um, um, thing so I'm gonna come in control create document and it's called um, post it post it okay we just created it and then let's add what it's saying to to put it in, right so it's saying it wants this bin So this is just uh, describing it, right? Pseudo, so this is just a small script. Pseudo change mod two seven seven. Two seven five five. Sorry. User slash bin malicious. Yeah, we're gonna run into some problems because I don't think this directory is the same. 2755 user bin malicious and pseudo and then we're gonna run pseudo user slash bin malicious and Exit zero. Save that. All right, we're gonna probably gonna have to come back and fix that because it wants to run the malicious. And make it executable fine but user being malicious oh wait a minute oh we're probably gonna put the malicious in there okay that makes sense this will add execute permissions to the malicious file then executes it with root privileges. Next, make post and executable by running the following command. So we'll come here. Uh, 
Trojans tag serving in way. Trojans. Next, make post it. Okay. So we're going to open the terminal here. I'm going to change mod plus X. Oh, Slash. Let's go post int no file in directory. Nah, I didn't do that right. Well, I'm already in that directory, so. I don't see why. Can't just do that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why I did the directory I'm in there already. I guess this is showing they're not in that directory or what? Yeah. Anyways. So we changed the mod so it can executable plus x executable post it. Okay, so that's executable now. <laughs> Open the post -it file and copy the following code snippet. Already. What? Oh, okay, we're right here. Adding the implant. Now we'll create the implant and add it to the user bin folder. Create the implant and add it to the user bin folder. To ensure the installer will copy it to the home user bin folder on the Victus machine during installation. Start by navigating the user bin inside the Mel Trojan folder. Desktop, user, CD user, man. Next, use the MS Venom command to create a malicious, malicious file. Okay, so we're going to go to the user bin. And then we're going to create this malicious using MS Venom. So, I'm going to go back. User bin. I'm going to create that malicious. I'm going to open the terminal here. And let me see what this MS Venom 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 All right. After we do this, we'll go back and SF Venom minus E X eighty six dot dot I mean dash dash platform 
Linux. MSP. Linux. X86. Interpreter. Reverse. TCP. I don't know why I can't use the, the, the old one. This is the same malicious item. Kelly IP address. That's the same one. I have all these servers and crap up. No host. No port. Let's be. F Elf minus O malicious. I'm gonna call it malicious. Let's see if that works. Found twelve compatible encoders. Attempting to encode payload with one iteration. Succeeded. Choose by its malicious. <laughs> so, where's my malicious? There's my malicious executable in that bin. Okay, it created it. We'll use MS Venom, okay, malicious. We'll use MS Venom with the same option as before to generate a malicious implant. However, instead of copying the implant directly to the victim's machine, we'll hide it inside the Alpine's installation folder. I mean, no duh, that's what we're doing. Okay, we already know that's what we're doing. Copy the consulting malicious binary to the user folder. Now the contents of your user bin folder should resemble this. What? The implant directly. Okay. Instead of copying the implant directly, we'll hide it inside Alpine's installation folder. Copy the resulting malicious binary to the user folder. Okay. Let's do that. So, we'll copy and go to the user folder. What? Okay, so it wants us to look 
What's in there? Alpine. User bin should look like that. So it does look like that. Okay. I, I don't know what the. Yeah, I don't know why they had to repeat that just to confuse me. Because <laughs> we created it. Oh, because they're always creating it from a different. No, he's in user bin. So, user bin, MS Venom. We'll use MS. So then he did it and it should have created it in the user bin. We'll use MS Venom the same option as before. Generate what should However, instead of copying it directly to the screen, we'll hide it inside out as the installer. Copy the resulting copy the resulting malicious binary to the user folder. Now the contents of user bin. That's where he was. Why would you have to copy it? It created it in there. Oh, it just wants me to copy it. Okay, now so now you're ready to package your files into your final dev, dev installation file. I don't know. Run the following command to start the repacking process. So now he's in Mail Trojan. I think that's fine like that. Because, you know, if we kind of look at this. So we're in the bin has the malicious payload. And or what, yeah, and um, the control has the post installation when they install it instructions to go to user bin malicious to run it, and that's where it's at. So we're good, I don't think it needs to be anywhere else. Looks just like that. All right, so now we're gonna run this command. Um, to repackage this. So he's in the Mel Trojan. Was he in the Mel Trojan before when he downloaded that? Mel Trojan has all the unpacked stuff. Okay, so we'll go to. copy this go here so yeah it does okay so we're gonna open the terminal here and we're gonna try to repack all this let's see if it works so since we added our malicious stuff to the this is I mean, this is just fun it's just really fun okay so now we'll go to what the heck happened? I went way back. Alright. Let's repack this with this DPKG. DPKG. Deb. Dot dot. Build. I'm just gonna see. Needs a directory.
Fill to open package info file. Oh, damn. Leave me in. And these that Damien then, huh? All right, let's. Okay, where's this guy at? He's, he's in his... Attacker server. Okay, so I was getting the er that error. Didn't want to build it. Um, because I had a space in my, in my, um, in my name. So in this attack server, I had a space that was just going to attacker and so I added an attacker and I did all this stuff, but it if you have spaces in it, in your names or your folders, it's going to mess it up, right? So what I did was, also what I did was, is I moved the, so I extracted all the, the files with the DK, you know, GB or whatever extractor because the ngram well, wasn't working. But I reconstructed it the way it showed in the in the in the book, right? So I took all that information, put it in the, the Debian folder, took out the controls folder and all that, and I just added the docs in it. On the way it said, right? And then your user bin, whatever. User was with this. So basically I copied what it was saying it was supposed to look like, right? So um it said one you know it's gonna have a dbn folder and the user once you extract it right so uh and then inside the dbn folders you're gonna have these three and that's it so i deleted everything else took those out of the control folder put them in put them in there and directly in there put the you took the fold user folder out put it right there next to it so i copied this exactly right that's what you want to do when you're troubleshooting stuff and then, I mean, I mean, the book says, right? And then um, we already created that. Then I copied, you know, this this came out good. It was in the right file. Then when I ran this, um, again, um, it gave me an error, right? Because so if I come here to the Debian folder, let's go to the Trojans. But here's here's my DB, my reconstructed DB file from this one. So this is the Alpine. Um, and you could rename this, right? Um, to be more stealthy. But I mean, we created it, and we can rename it. Um, here here's the 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 extracted now if i extract this it's going to have all the control stuff right so well it's, i mean that that's not working so i don't know why so if i extract that there oh it's not gonna work something's going on anyways there it is 
Yeah, see, it's not let me extract nothing. But um, it created it, right? And reconstructed it because it was giving me uh, error because I had attack space server. So it was stopping on attacker and it wasn't going to the rest of this to, to create it, right? But see, now that I fixed the attack server, took the space out, and then uh, had the right, um, you know, uh, directory in there. Um, since I was already in Trojans, I guess you still have to put the whole directory. I don't know. You might be able just to get away with just putting that in there, but I put the whole directory. Um, building package Alpine in home, yada, 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 mail Trojan.dev. So it created it. It worked. And there it is. But it took a lot of troubleshooting, and it, it all boiled down to um, my my directory path. One of my folders had a had a um, space in it, and it was so it was messing everything up. We couldn't find the directory, and then I think that you do have to follow the the you know this when you extract it, reassemble it with the Debian and the user and um, take out the controls folder and just put all the documents in the Debian file. I mean, you know, you got to kind of like go off the book and stuff and, and I start reconstructing it, but you know, so this worked. Now let's see if we can get it to install on um, on this, you know, this is the whole part of this. These books is troubleshooting it. They, they're not. So, I mean, they're not really clear on um, thing. All right, let's go to the next thing. All right, voila! You created your first Trojan. You can view it by navigating to the desktop malware Trojans folder and running the ls command. We already did that. All right, so what we're going to go do now is I'm going to go back and um, I'm going to write some commands and some instructions like I always do just in case I need to use this uh just in case I need to use um I need to use this one day right and I can't remember the the commands so let's go back down so let's go to Creating the Trojans. So what I'll do is I'll go attack server malware Trojans. No Trojan. No. So I'll come here, create a document, and I'll put um, create a, uh, Okay, creating tro Trojan. Instructions go in here. And I'm going to say one. App get download Alpine. We'll put in here this is example program to um, install. Um, 
I'll put it in my own words. Okay. Oh, pass. Get that over. So I'm gonna get it confused. And then we'll say, um, now I'm not going to use that in, in grandpa because, um, it didn't work. So I'm going to type in here how to extract a B dot Linux. <sighs> so, just end it. Okay. Now I use the AR. Yep. So copy. So this is the command that I used. No. Damn. That's the. I'm going to take this off. I don't like using those brackets. Or... Now this is just for like, you know, for my reference from hacking or from testing or from somebody's asking me a question or somebody says, do you know how to do this? I can say, yeah, I know how to do this. And here's the steps. And here's an idea of where to start at least, right? At the very least, right? That's what we're doing. We're going to have to figure out our own ways how to do stuff. But here's the, this, what this does is it jogs your memory. So we, you know, hey, have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? If you're on the interview or if you're trying to extract a file or something or anything, you can be like, oh, I remember I did it on here and here's the command for it. You know, um, just if you can't, you know, you don't have access to the internet or if, you know, just to have it all in one place, you can associate what commands go with what, right? So um, this extracts the .db file. That's it. And I can't type, and I can't, and I can't spell. It extracts. I mean, there's no s in there. But okay, eh, it's okay. Yeah. I don't know. This extracts the .db. All right. I'm not known for my spelling or my <laughs> typing. So, all right. So then we'll go to back to the book, and so that's the one thing that I had to modify because apparently that wasn't working on mine. And I tried to update it and all that, but it wasn't working. And I'm gonna put in here a note. Um, I'm gonna put a note here. Uh, reassemble the extracted dot file to Thank you. 
What is it? Control position. MD5. Just a little note. If I read it and go, okay, what the heck is going on here? All right, it's not working. Okay, and then we'll go to the next one. I guess it wanted me to. And following script to post it. Okay. Uh, pseudo change one. Two seven five five user bin delicious and what the what user bin delicious and Pseudo, and we might have to come back and fix this. Delicious. Uh, and Change mod plus X Next, we're going to um, Okay, so now we're going to create the malicious file and the malicious file is going to be User bin
and this is good to go through this again so you can understand what you're doing right it's kind of like um, repetitive right so you want to you want to do this you want to take these notes too because that's the way I learned and in, in, um, it uh, helps you understand you know it's just like martial arts you know repetitive motion um, you know, helps you get used to doing it as well. <sighs> Understand what you're doing. Slash bin, right? Yeah, no, yeah, you just slash bin folder. Just simple instructions breaks down in your mind what you're doing um, if you forget you go back and you read it this is a very important part of the process I would say um, keep your own notes the more I enter in this stuff the more I mess with it the better right Now I, I I'm describing it the way I, I see it, and you know it's easy for me to understand. And so that would be the directory, okay. And that's it. That's your steps, right, for what we just did. Creating the Trojan instructions. And when they read this, they'll they'll figure it all out. Here's the here's my Trojan, right? Okay, I could change the name of that and everything. Um, I might have to go and recreate it, or I could probably just change the name, I'm sure of it. Um, so, I think that's good for that video. Um, we can keep going, but I'm going to chop this into two different videos, so this video is not so long. Um, I'm going to do another video pick up right where I left off since I have everything running already fresh in my mind and i um, going to start with uh, I think the next one we're going to use the Ubuntu um, the Ubuntu desktop virtual machine finally it's almost the end of the book and we're barely using that you know it's just it's been a long time so i think that's it 
we're gonna we're gonna end this video right now and then I'm gonna do a meet I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get through this whole um, section today right and because it's interesting I want to keep going so all right that was hack the file see you next time have fun